Hi everyone, Ellie Jacobson here, and today I want to talk about methane. You probably have heard that the latest methane numbers are now an astronomical 1900 parts per billion. And I want to give you a different way to sort of look at the growth of methane today than has been presented anywhere else that I've found. Um, and it just is a way of looking at the data that really gives insight to where we are headed with methane um, growth. So what I want to start with is just sort of reviewing where the data comes from and what's already known. So everything comes from NOAA, right? This is where we look for our methane data, the Global Monitoring Laboratory. And we see here this, these um, figures that were just released that were so shocking that we have 1900.5 parts per billion now up from 1884 um, last year. You know, in fact, if you go back long enough, um, 200 years, we had in about the 750 parts per billion range. So methane has been growing much faster on a percentage basis than CO2. Methane is 84 times as potent a greenhouse gas over its first 20 years in the atmosphere. It is um, over 20 times as powerful over 100 years in the atmosphere. So this is a gas that is now number two as far as the overall effect on atmospheric uh, warming and climate change next to CO2. The difference with methane is that it leaves the atmosphere relatively quickly. In fact, CO2 has a half-life of maybe hundreds of years. That, in other words, if you have a certain quantity of CO2 in the atmosphere, it will take centuries for that uh, CO2 to become just half as much as it was at some previous point. Whereas with methane, if we were to stop emitting methane um, today, then in a mere 110 months, we would have half as much methane. And it's this fast half-life that gives people in the IPCC and at NOAA hope that maybe if we could control the output uh, from anthropogenic sources, then we could um, reduce this greenhouse gas enough to stave off the massive heating that's coming and give us time to develop other technologies for CO2 uh, capture or cleaner um, fuels, that sort of thing. So what I want to do is go through um, very quickly what this site offers in terms of their analysis, but then I want to show you my particular analysis and how I come up with it. So first of all, this is the long-term trajectory of the global um, methane in the atmosphere. And what's interesting is that we see from about 1998 through about 2008, this almost flat line. And for a long period of time, people were saying, ah, we have hope or we've done a lot to get methane out of the atmosphere. We've cleaned the fuels or whatever. And there was this sort of prolonged um, period of belief that uh, this gas would not continue to rise the way it had sort of historically up to that point. Um, but you see, as about 2008, it has really taken off. Now, there's all sorts of conjectures why that is. Uh, La Nina, in particular, creates more equatorial rain, which creates more decay of grasslands, which creates um, you know, more anaerobic decomposition and more methane. That's one. There's this conjecture that there are somehow fewer hydroxyls um, being radiated, and that interacts with and oxidizes methane. So maybe that's where the methane is going. Uh, there's not as many hydroxyls. Um, there, there are some uh, speculations uh, of, about why this growth has taken off here, whether um, it is some clathrate, some Arctic thing happening. Maybe we're, we are getting the permafrost in Siberia giving up its methane. But all of those things aside, we can see that we have this recent growth. Now, if we actually look at the year-over-year -year numbers that NOAA presents, we see that, in fact, in 2020 to 2021, we have the largest year-over-year -year recorded. Um, yeah, so this is, this is massive, and this is when we are thinking as a culture that methane is our way out. Now, what I do is to create this particular plot right here. And what this does is to actually show you 
the methane that is going into the atmosphere year over year. This is the actual amount of methane, new methane, entering the atmosphere on a 12-month basis. So it's not a per month, it's a per 12 months. And what I'm doing is taking into consideration that methane has this half-life of 110 months. And what that means is that if we have some quantity of methane in one month, then naturally a certain amount of that is going to decay out or oxidize or whatever you want to say so that the next month we automatically have a certain amount less than the previous month just based on that decay. Now, how do we get an even higher number than this month in the next month? Well, we have to add back all the amount that decayed plus the new amount that got us to that highest, higher number. So the fact that we're decaying so rapidly with methane, and yet the numbers are growing, indicates that as time goes on, we have to pump even more and more and more methane into the atmosphere to sustain this level of growth. So that's what's going on with this graph. And you notice that um, this is a year over year. We're hitting new peaks all the time of the amount of methane for a full year that has gone into the atmosphere to get this growth. And again, we see this long period from about 1998, which is this peak right here, um, to 2008, where we had these, these huge gaps in methane, right? These uh, methane sinks for some reason. But ever since then, the amount of new methane entering the atmosphere has been going up and up and up. So, what I want to do is explain how I came up with this graph, because there have been some questions about it, and I don't claim to be the world's greatest expert on um, this sort of analysis. This is just my own hack of the data. So let me just show you um, how I came up with this thing. Now, first of all, what I did was to go down here to the very bottom and grab the globally average marine surface monthly mean data. So this data right here is available to anybody who wants to work with it. And what this does is it just gives you the raw methane reading. So we see right here that we have the year and the month, right? And then we have that average amount of methane in parts per billion for that month in the, this column right here under average. And this keeps going all the way down to the most recent month where we had 1900.5. So I get this data each month, and what I do is to import it into an Excel spreadsheet. So let me just show you that spreadsheet here, and we're going to work with this for a little while now. All right, so in this spreadsheet, I have the year, the month, and then the NOAA um, average right here in the third column. So what's my next step here? Well, my next step is to simply get this yearly average. I want to always work with a trailing 12-month yearly average so that I can smooth out the data. So what that means is that I can't really get a trailing value for the first 12 months of data, but starting here in June of 1984, you see that what I have is just the average of the previous 12 months. I just added the previous 12 months together and divided by 12, right? So that's what I get in that cell. Um, and I keep doing that the whole way down. So I'm working with smoothed out data averaged over an entire year. So you can see that's going all the way down here where I'm averaging these numbers in this column. And uh, it's just, it just studies, it just smooths things out so that we, we don't have to worry about inaccuracies or little jumps here and there um, month to month. Now, what is this number right here? Well. I had the 1638.7 as the average of the previous 12 months. And what I did is I said, well, how much of that 1638.7 is left next month, at the end of next month? And the point is that because of this decay, I'm going to lose a certain fraction of that. And it turns out that I lose a fairly substantial amount, right? I lose, if you look at this formula, I take one half and raise it to the power 1 divided by 110. Now, this is the formula if you were taking a course in calculus, you would learn about uh, decay, radioactive decay. This is how much methane is left if you assume a decay model of a half-life of 110 months, and you go forward one month. So all I'm doing in this column then is I'm taking the raw numbers, and I'm saying, okay, let that decay for a month. How much do I have left? And that's what I get here. 
So the 1638.7 decays to 1628.4, the 1639.6 decays to 1629.3, and so on. Each of these numbers decays down to the next month. So how much new methane did I, do I get then? Well, in this month of July, I have 1639.6 parts per billion recorded by NOAA. But where did I start? I started with this amount, 1628.4, which was the leftover after decay from the previous month. So the new methane, in order to get to 1639, had to be 11.3 parts per billion. Let me go through that again on the next month. The next month, my 12-month average was 1640.7. The leftover methane, assuming the half-life of 110 months from the previous month, was 1629.3, which means the new methane added to the atmosphere just in that month had to be 11.4 parts per billion. And so I go through every single month this way. I say, what's the leftover methane from last month? What is the recorded value for this month? This must be the new methane. So we are getting a quantity of new methane entering the atmosphere each month. And that's what this column represents right here, is the new methane entering the atmosphere. And so now all I want to know is how much methane has entered the atmosphere over the previous 12 months. Well, I need 12 months to pass before I can start recording that. And so what we see right here with this value 137 is I've simply added up these values right here, these 12 values, to get the preceding 12-month total methane entering the atmosphere, and that's 137 right here. So we see each month the new methane entering the atmosphere, right? And it just keeps going like this. Now, these values right here, if you look down this column of new methane entering the atmosphere, you see it's in the 130s, and the, maybe it goes into the 140s and back to the 130s and so on. You might even get a couple of values in the 120s in there for the methane entering the atmosphere. And now we're, we're in the 140s again. And what happens as we get more and more current is we actually break the 150s. We're now getting over 150 parts per billion into the atmosphere every single year. And in fact, if you look through these numbers, the last several months in a row, we have been hitting new all-time high amounts of methane entering the atmosphere month after month after month. And again, the more methane we put in the atmosphere, the more is going to decay out, right? Because it's a, a uh, net fraction of the amount that's in the atmosphere that's decaying. So that if we beat that number, we have to add even more back to get to the new value. So that's why these numbers keep increasing. This rate of growth is actually increasing. So I personally just find this um, very fascinating that this is um, going on right now with our planet. Um, it is um, a telltale sign that methane is explosively growing out of control. And those people who argue, well, we can just cap some oil wells or we can change cow flatulence are failing to understand that there is the, there are sources of methane that are not anthropogenic, that are, are natural sources, that are contributing, that are accelerating on their own, that have their own feedback loops. And it is going to be very enlightening to see whether this particular graph continues to grow out of control or whether we actually turn a corner somehow um, and start flatlining this, and then having the amount of new methane entering the atmosphere start to decline on a year-over-year -year basis. Until this thing turns around, all of the COP promises are worthless, right? All of the um, promises to uh, abate um, methane in order to try and save the planet are just going to fail us. So uh, that's my message for today. Um, yeah, it's not encouraging that this graph continues to go up. This is definitely a bad sign for the future of um, humanity, for the future of the planet, for the future of species and everything else that's going on. So, okay, everybody, 
That's what I wanted to say today. Um, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.